Let my honesty spill out through the pages. You're listening to Escaping the Rat Race. I'm your host, Amy Leo, a singer, songwriter, and mental health educator. And our show is all about questioning the status quo and pushing the boundaries into what's possible for human beings and not probable. So tune in and get ready to escape the rat race, not only the monotonous nine to five work grind, but also that incessant internal mental chatter that prevents most of us humans from experiencing more joy, peace, clarity, and freedom. On today's show, we're asking the question, what if? What if there's a simpler way of navigating life? Whether we desire personal change or to serve others or to create something in the world, doesn't it make sense that if we better understand how a system, and in this case, our human system, is designed to work, then it would allow us to be able to better troubleshoot that system and consequently know what fuel works best in order for it to run efficiently. So get ready for a better or at least a simpler way that guest speaker psychologist Dr. Amy Johnson as well as thousands of other people and practitioners around the world have discovered. A simple understanding that has transformed their lives from the inside out and without years of hard work and struggle. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you find yourself in the world today. My name is Amy Leo from ReviveYourSanity.com, and I'm really excited about the guest we have today. We have Dr. Amy Johnson on. She is a psychologist and a life coach, and uh, we're colleagues in what's called sharing the three principles. So if you're curious about what that is, I highly <laughs> recommend you stay on the call. And Amy, I am just going to stop talking and let you take it away. If you could share a little bit about your story and then what you are doing today, that would be great. Sure. Um, yeah. So I, uh, I'm, a, like you said, a coach, psychologist, had been for a while, um, was loving it and was also having a lot of challenges and feeling like there has to be more than this, you know, like, like people kind of were getting some help. I was getting some help and relief, but just kind of that nagging feeling of, okay, there has to be some, some way that people can change more easily, that can find lasting change that doesn't require tons of effort. And I know this is something that so many helpers, like yourself included, you know, so many of us as helpers kind of come up against. And it just really is a, it's a really cool thing, I think, how it all works, how so many of us try so hard and get frustrated, but that in that frustration, it kind of tends to open us up to something and, to, and that search for there has to be a better way, you know? So that's my story as well, basically. I mean, there had to be a better way. And um, and so kind of in that and in my own personal struggles with habits and addictions and lots of anxiety, um, I kind of came across this understanding of life that, you know, essentially is just kind of showing that we're all full of such health and such wisdom and that we just get caught up in our own thoughts and think that that's us, but it's not, you know, and, and kind of looking at that, it changed my life personally in a lot of ways. And it had huge, huge impacts on the way that I worked with people. So, um, in a lot of ways, I still do, you know, my, my work is essentially, I'm in the same career, basically, as I was in before I came across this understanding um, four or five years ago. Um, but mostly it feels completely different just because of the impacts that I'm having with people and the way that I work and, and the, the lightness and the ease and the fun that it is for me now. I would love if you could speak a little bit more on that, because um, I'm sure that there's people that are listening that are in the, the helping professions. And, and when I was working social work, there was a lot of burnout and a lot of uh, high stress. So, Amy, can you share where, where does that come from? And, and then what can people do or maybe not do about that? Yeah, I think, um, you know, the burnout, the stress, the um, feeling really discouraged, taking our clients' problems home with us at night. Um, I, like, it comes from a lot of places. It comes from within us and the way that we're seeing everything that we're doing as helpers. But I think it can kind of be boiled down to a simple thing. For me, anyway, it feels like I used to think that these people really needed my help. Like, I was completely overlooking what they already had going for them. And that is that when their mind's clear, 
And when they stop digging their heels in and searching frantically for the solution to their big problem, you know, when they stop trying to fix themselves, they will and do see things. And that happens all the time. And, you know, there's an interesting phenomenon that I think um, some people have seen, I'm sure, that it seems like sometimes once people kind of go into counseling or therapy or whatever it is that they're doing, um, sometimes they can feel kind of worse. And people will report this a lot, you know, they feel kind of worse either in the sessions or just through that whole process of looking there regularly. And, and sometimes problems tend to get a little worse. And I think really, I mean, the huge part of that is like, okay, I've just, I've just acknowledged that I have a problem and they're seeing it as this big problem. And then they're doing all this stuff to try to fix this big problem. And that's a lot of effort. And it's a lot of focusing on something that looks like a problem, you know, it looks like a, a flaw or um, an illness sometimes or whatever it looks like. And as practitioners, it, look, it can look like that for us as well. So I used to see, okay, this person really has a lot of anxiety. I'm going to see if I can help them see it differently, maybe cope with it differently. They, maybe they can also go on medication. Like it just looked like, oh, I'm fighting a losing battle here and I'm just doing the best I can to help them out. And now it doesn't look like that. And so there's a lot less stress and a lot less burnout because now it looks more like something like um, this person is healthy. Like they have so much going for them. And I don't care what the situation is, what their predicament is. This is true of everyone. They have so much going for them. There's so much that they can see. They're wired to see things about themselves and their minds that are going to be helpful. They're designed for that. It's just really caught, it's like a little, you know, scratch in a record. They're just really caught up in this little groove where, like, they, they think all this anxious stuff, and they just happen to think that's true. They get really caught up in it. That's the only problem. So that is a, you know, it's a real change. It's a total change for the client to be seen that way. It's a big change for the helper as well. It's, it's a lot easier to sleep at night when you know that you have a lot of help. You know, the wisdom is in them, and their health is there. Yes, I can really relate to that. Uh, and, and, you know, it's even interesting. I think I always intuitively knew that this was true about human beings, despite all of my education in psychology and social work techniques, because I remember working with the kids and, and even kids that were exhibiting all of these, what we would call problematic behaviors, they had such a little flicker in their eye. You know, and there was a wisdom and there was a respect there that I always had for the kids, no matter what their diagnosis was, no matter what their age was. And consequently, I didn't really experience any uh, problems as far as, you know, I had clients with a history of violent behavior. I was never uh, had any situations like that. So there's something about that when we tap into what each of us intuitively know to be true. And it's yeah. really just a reminder. And I love that you're really pointing to uh, what I hear you saying is that it's pretty neutral <laughs> and that it isn't yeah. up to us to get in there and, you know, as if we can take a little pick and get into our brains and think, okay, well, if we keep rehashing this problem, we can pick into the brain and remove it, but it doesn't work like that. <laughs> you know? Right. Exactly. Exactly. To, to me, that's almost like, and, you know, looking uh, for rainbows in the toilet. You're not going to get rainbows. You're just going to get more crap. You know, <laughs> it's, kind of, <laughs> it's kind of thing. So I would love, so we're talking a little bit about people in the helping profession, uh, and I'd love for you to share if there's people on the call or that are listening that have a passion to either help others or to do their art, but, but something's preventing them. Do you have anything that you would share with them? Oh, I mean, I really, um, there's a lot of stuff, you know, I think for everybody, um, it's just kind of looking at so something stopping them. Who knows what the heck that is. But at the end of the day, it's only one thing. It's their own thinking, right? So, so in the one hand, like that could be an extremely open question. You know, there's if a helper or an artist or anybody who wants to do something and something's in their way. And that can look like, oh, my gosh, we have to find what's in the way. We'll find what's in the way, right, and get it out of the way. <laughs> and, and actually, <laughs> actually, as I'm sure you know, you asked the question, like, it's so much simpler than that. And I think that's such a huge point for people to see. Like, 
no matter who you are, no matter what's in your way, it doesn't really matter what's in your way. Essentially, it's one thing. It's some limitation, some thinking that that you're really taking as truth, you know, something that's just kind of showing up in your experience. So when I think of, when I say thinking and thought here, you know, it's just like something that occurs to us. And when it closes us down a little bit, when it limits us, when it starts to funnel things or have us feeling a little a little less hopeful than we did a minute ago, we can know for sure that that's not the truth. It's just the way it works. You know, when we're feeling something that has an impact like that on us, we can know that we're seeing it in a way that's biased. It's just the way that we're seeing it. It's just the way it's showing up. Now, that's not a problem. It doesn't matter. It's not, it's not dangerous, truly. It's just that we kind of want to get to know that. You know, we kind of want to just understand how that works. Now, that doesn't mean there are things in the, in the outside world that can kind of serve as obstacles at a time. You know, like if, like you were saying before we started this call, if we have really bad reception on this call and you don't have the technical savvy to figure out how to work with that, then we would have a real life obstacle. But that's not really what we're talking about 99% of the time, <laughs> or even if it is, even when it is what we're talking about. The thing is, Within all of us, when we can kind of just relax and know that we will have new thoughts that will help us out, that will help us to see things differently, well, then, I don't know, we would just relax, say, okay, we have some crappy reception. What do you want to do? What occurs to you? You want to reschedule? Should I try on a different phone? Like, that stuff would just show up. And that's kind of a small example, but I guarantee it's the exact same thing in anything you're doing. If you're trying to start a gigantic corporation right now and you're finding a lot of mental or outside world kind of obstacles, it's the exact same thing. You know, when our mind relaxes, we start to see things. And part of our mind relaxing, I think, is kind of being in this place where we aren't we aren't trying to steer everything through our intellect. You know, we're kind of in a place where it's like, well, I don't know. It's a lot. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. Right. I love that phrase. I don't know, you know, like, and really just being in that and from that free open, I don't know. I wonder, let's look, let's get curious. Like from that kind of place, we, we, again, are just wired to have new thought. It is part of the human design that we will have new thought that's helpful that will kind of show us around these things that look like obstacles or they stop looking like obstacles or, you know, however that works. Yes. There's something, you know, about having a clear state of mind and then just seeing it as logistics, you know, that's a really different feeling as to in my own life, I can speak as to when I'm really taking things personal and I'm taking my thinking and my perception Seriously, (laughs) this has been one of the biggest game changers for for me was recognizing that the feeling state that I'm having right now, like exactly like what Amy's pointing to, it is going to change and shift. That's the nature of the system. I can't get out of that even if I wanted to. I mean, I had this really funny realization once when I realized, wow, I'm taking being human really personally. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And I think there maybe are some people on the call who who do have a habit of, of thinking of, of wanting to control things or kind of this quote unquote type A kind of uh, personality. And I wonder if you can speak to what's on offer for human beings that's deeper than that. Um, yeah, it's, you know, it's like that Einstein quote that I never get right. That's, that's about, I never get any quotes right, but that's about, you know, kind of that we, we have this intuition. We have this, um, what I, you know, we call wisdom a lot. Common sense is my favorite way of thinking about it. We have so much common sense. We just like things just show up for us. They truly do. And we also have really, really great intellect. We have a great brain that's really smart. And that's like the hard drive, right? I mean, it remembers a lot of facts and it's really good at doing computations and putting things in a kind of linear logical way. And 
And that's great. But what the Einstein quote essentially points to is the fact that we've kind of built a society that honors the intellect, honors that machine, the hard drive, and kind of loses sight of the intuition of the bigger power that's there. You know, so again, it's it's not making one right or wrong or choosing or anything like that. It's just kind of coming to to have an appreciation and understanding for how this works. And essentially that that intuition, that common sense, that wisdom constantly, constantly coming through us. And it's very easy to discount because we hear words like intuition and wisdom <laughs> and we want it we want it to feel like a huge aha moment, you know, or we want to be able to see the future <laughs> or whatever, you know, whatever kind of messy words are kind of attached to those words just in our, our lexicon. But again, just kind of open your mind and see it. It's just a, that's why I love common sense. It's just, it's so everyday, commonplace, so simple. It's like when it's close to lunchtime and your stomach starts to growl, you don't have to have a, a conversation with your intellect about lunch. You just, I mean, sometimes we do. <laughs> sometimes we fall into that for sure, but you don't have to. Kids don't, you know, it's not necessary. You just walk to the kitchen and you fix what you feel like eating. Like it's that simple, you know, when you have to, my favorite example is kind of like when you have to pee, <laughs> you don't have a conversation about it. You don't make a decision. <laughs> you just walk to the bathroom, you pee, you're done. <laughs> so it's like, that's what's on offer. It's something that's that simple, but also that profound that's always working through us and when we can kind of relax our intellect a little bit I mean that like so much in life just sort of shows up and flows through us that's beautiful and and I just really love the the truth as I've really come to see it like we've said uh throughout the call is that that's available to every human being all the time you know and and that's the really exciting thing and and going back for, I find I'm a lot kinder to myself now. And also it allows me the opportunity to just sit with another human being in my work or in my personal life without an agenda, you know, without that feeling that you described before of like, well, I've got something that I've got to give to you or I have to help by maybe this right technique or what did I read in that book last week? Oh crap, you know? <laughs> and to yeah. me, all that does is just create a lot of mental busyness that actually takes me away from the present moment and therefore I'm a little bit less responsive than I otherwise may be. Yeah. So where to take it now? You know, I really, um, I'd like to switch gears a little bit. I really love what you share about addiction and, and habits. And I was wondering if you could speak a little to that. I have some clients who create a lot of rules for themselves, you know, that, well, I've got to get better at my instruments. So I need to do at least an hour a day of this. And then I need to work out and need to do an yeah. hour of this. They've got lots of techniques and then they try to maybe meditate or do mindfulness to, you know, alleviate the stress. And I wonder if you can, if you can speak to, to habits and, and techniques and how you see that. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a great question. I mean, it's, and there's so many places to go, but just like in that example you just gave, it just makes me think of how basically everything is a habit. <laughs> like <laughs> our, so much of our thinking, so much of our, so, you know, we're used to again thinking of habits. It's like, oh, I bite my nails, I smoke or whatever, you know, but so much of our thinking is habitual. And I think that is such a profound thing to really see because our thinking is not the truth. Our thinking isn't even ours. It's not like what, you know, if you, if you uh, have meditate every single day, maybe you enjoy it. Maybe you don't. I don't know. Maybe you really, like the real kind of core part of us, maybe we are really truly called to do that. And maybe we aren't. And probably sometimes we aren't. Sometimes we are, you know, but, but we tend to do these things that we get so caught up and kind of run by our mind and our mind is just a machine just like one of my teachers calls it like an appliance I love that it's like a toaster it's an appliance it's an appliance a machine in our head that really just it's really smart but it's not wise and it runs you know it, it kind of follows a lot of rules and it like a machine tends to do and it's very, very habitual for wonderful reasons. You know, it's very efficient and it keeps us alive and it does lots of great things for us. 
but you kind of kind of like we've been saying throughout like you kind of want to understand that a little bit because if you think that everything that comes out of that machine it's really important and it's really how you feel and it's really what's helpful you're going to get into some trouble <laughs> you know you're you're letting the machine which is smart but not wise kind of run the show and when we can start to see oh my gosh what if my mind is just constantly talking constantly narrating life and giving its opinions about what I should do and what's helpful and all of that kind of stuff. But if we can kind of see, okay, there's this talking machine in our head that narrates our life and has lots of opinions, but there's something a lot wiser beneath that. And it's not that you don't listen to the machine at times. Sometimes what the machine tells you feels like common sense and, and you just find yourself doing it and that's fine, but not always. You know, so you you, you kind of notice the distinction there. And you, um, I think it, it really is just knowing that there's a quiet place that's full of real common sense and wisdom and just peace kind of beneath that talking machine. When you kind of know that, you notice it more. You know, you feel the difference. One just talk, 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 talk all the time, tells you the same stuff every day all the time. <laughs> And the other one isn't. <laughs> the other one's peaceful and it's quiet. It gives you fresh ideas and it shows you solutions to things that you keep calling problems, you know? And, and so again, I mean, we're just doing this at a very nutshell here, but for anyone that's kind of new to this, it really is kind of getting that understanding of the two that they start to kind of separate from each other. You naturally start to see, oh, yeah, there's that talk, talk, talk machine in my head. And then, wait a minute, this feels different. This is something else. And that's just a amazing help in creating anything in life and just navigating life. Oh, abs- absolutely. You know, there's something about, you know, the computer and the analytical and how that's really useful. I mean, for certain things, but yeah. what it isn't useful for is love or, or wisdom. Um, you know, it's like we can only pull from that machinery. So then it becomes a circuit. If we don't have a solution, then we pull back through other uh, yeah. <laughs> habit loops. You know, I, I always joke about this. Right. <laughs> I've shared this before in the show, but I just think it's hilarious. <laughs> I wasn't as aware of how it works. I remember doing a pros and cons list, uh, trying to choose between which guy I wanted to date because two guys liked me at the same time. I mean, how silly is that? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> It's just ridiculous. But, you know, the, the beauty of being human and the, the humbleness of it is that there's areas that I still don't see where I probably am kind of doing that now. And what's been exciting for me is yeah. kind of stepping into the unknown a little bit with, with not anything on it, with the realization that the unknown is actually, you know, that's where creation comes from, that formless spiritual, if we want to call it, space. All the shoulds and coulds and if onlys or if whens say nothing about my worth as a human being, number one. And number two, they say nothing about my past or my future and where I'm headed. Um, And that can be just like you said, just helpful. Not that we get out of being human because I'm sure, Amy, you also have your human moments too where it feels low and sticky um, as I do. But the relation is different when you know how something works. Yeah, okay. So I I like this question um, a lot. What, What is your kind of views on where we can take the world, how change can can happen. Uh, And then if you could share with folks maybe one or two things that you think would be really helpful to someone who's struggling to build a business or follow their passions or uh, get out of a situation that perhaps they're scared to get out of, but know in their gut is the right thing to do. I'm curious about how you see the potential for change as at, at an individual level and then globally. Um, cause okay. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think kind of like you're saying, you know, that when we, when we are just caught up in what that, that talking machine in our head is constantly telling us, even when it's doing its best to kind of help us change or give us new solutions. And it really does, you know, it, it does sometimes help. It definitely adds to things like it's not, not a bad thing at all, but it's, it's nothing compared to what's actually possible in that open space of infinite potential. So I think when it comes to change, individual change or global change, but so big, like 
And in some ways, we kind of know this, but we, we kind of keep looking at the problem. You know, we keep looking at the problem and thinking, okay, well, here's the problem. Let's rehash the problem. Okay, we're totally familiar with the problem. Now, how do we get here? What, like, what should we tweak? What should we change? If it's an individual level, it's like, okay, here's what I keep doing. Now, what can I think instead? What can I do? So every client I work with wants to know, well, what do I think when I feel an urge to do this? When I want to light my cigarette or I want to binge you, what should I say to myself? You know, and it's on that, still on that very flat, linear kind of plane of one thing that we're then wanting to kind of move and tweak when we, if we could just look up a little bit and expand our vision, we see that there's this gigantic, like infinite pool of possibility. So we want to quit staring at what, how things look right now. Quit staring at what looks like the problem. I have it, I have it. This is what I have to change, you know, like, and, and look to a, a brand new way of seeing all of it, which is what, you know, you and I share with people, it is really kind of getting to that place where we see our own emotional human experience, emotions, thoughts, behaviors. We see all of that together in a new way. It's not like we see a new behavior to do or a new thought to think. We see the fact that we think. We see how we feel, where our feelings come from. We see all of that in a brand new way. And I think that's honestly what I know. That's what this understanding that we share with people really does for us is it takes it to a whole new plane. Um, and and I just want to say, I mean, I know these are kind of short calls, which I think is great. But, and so that's going to sound a little vague. And like some people who are brand new to this, they're not maybe not really going to know what we're talking about. But, you know, I know in these calls and stuff like we, you know, Amy points you to resources and ways to kind of see more of this understanding. Please like follow those, you know, take her up on that and like, like look into this more yourself because there's such a such a wonderful understanding here for the taking that anyone can get. And that really is, is where it's at. Um, and then the, other, the second question, I forgot that one now. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. I have, I have this bad habit, quote unquote, Amy, of asking people two or three questions in a row. I, I should probably stop doing that. <laughs> or maybe not. Maybe not. No. Um, the second question uh, was, if there was one thing you wanted listeners uh, to take home from today's call, what would that be? Mm-hmm. And then if you can share, of course, where people uh, can reach you if they want to work with you more or learn more. I know you have um, some published books as well out, uh, yeah. and that would be a really accessible way for people to to learn more too. Yeah, great. So, um, yeah, so I'm remembering more now. So, so there's one thing to kind of take from this. And yeah, if you're trying to create something, start a business, like whatever it is you're doing, I think. I don't know, this answer would probably change every, you know, each day. But right now, the thing that's just really coming to mind for me is to kind of know that there really are, this sounds so cliche on some level, but it's really profound if you kind of hear it, that there aren't really any true limits. Even the physical things in the world, that's fine. You work our way around those or you won't, and that's fine. But just kind of knowing that when it looks like, there's a lot of limits, there's a lot of problems, there's a lot of obstacles, you don't know what to do. It's kind of seeing that that's a lot of thinking. It's your mind just getting a little tangled up in itself. And all you have to do is know that. If you can know that that's the only problem in those moments, and that it's just it's so helpful to know, okay, I'm just, I'm just seeing down, you know, a dead end. If there's not really a dead end. It's just looking like a dead end to me. And when my mind just kind of settles and clears or moves on, like it's not always going to look that way because I think most of us don't know that. So we think, oh, no, that's a dead end. And then we carry that thought around with us for the rest of our lives. Think, oh, no, I tried that already. That doesn't work. But we didn't realize it was just a state of mind that we weren't seeing. You know, we were just looking, just look like a dead end. If you go back and look, you see, wait a minute, that's not a dead end at all. But we never go back and look because we don't know that that's how our mind works. So I don't know. Hopefully that that translates and it's helpful for people. Um, and then, yeah, where to find me? Um, my website's dramyjohnson.com, which is dramyjohnson.com. And I have a ton of stuff there. I've been writing about this, these truths and this understanding for years. And there's a ton of free articles there. 
I have a couple books out, one specifically on habits called Little Book of Big Change, one specifically on this understanding, which is called Being Human. Um, you can read those books. I have a bunch of classes, all kinds of stuff there. So uh, DrAmyJohnson.com. Well, fantastic. I, I also feel a little torn because I do want to keep talking more, but maybe we can have you on the show again. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to be back. That way we can, we can hear a little bit more, but uh, thank you so much, Amy, for coming on the show today. Uh, again, my name is Amy Leo. If you're interested in this conversation, um, we are actually also running retreats at reviveyoursanity.com. We've got Costa Rica coming up in August and then an India trip actually in the winter. So if folks want to reach out to me, they can reach me at reviveyoursanity.com. Well, rock and roll, Amy. I wish you a lovely day and I hope to talk soon. Thank you so much. Great to be here. Awesome. Take care. Bye. Wow. I find Dr. Amy Johnson's perspective on mental well-being and thriving really refreshing. My major take home for today is it's not what we think that matters, but it's that we think. And I loved how Amy highlighted that our brain is just a constantly talking, meaning-making machine. But asking the question, what if that internal chatter doesn't need to be taken seriously? What if all that internal chatter is just a reflection of our past habits of thought and doesn't actually tell us anything objectively about ourselves or the world. I loved how Amy highlighted that there are two kinds of intelligences available to us. We have our smart but ever chattering brains that can only provide us with things that we have thought, learned, or experienced before, which can be very useful, but that there's also this wiser and deeper level of intelligence that exists underneath that and that this is the space where fresh thought and epiphanies come from. The only problem, as I heard Amy share, is that our minds get tangled up in themselves from time to time. And the only solution is that we know that. That knowing that sometimes our minds are going to get tangled up, but that our state of mind does and will shift and clear naturally on its own because that's how the human system is designed to work. If you want to get more inspirational and practical conversations like this delivered straight to your device, please subscribe on iTunes. And while you're there, if you could be so kind to leave us a review, that would be extremely helpful. It helps get the word out about our new show. And plus, we do uh, provide a gift card every week to a random reviewer. So feel free to write a review and then maybe you'll join us on a retreat. Again, this was Amy Leo from 